Schlagen, Boys! Und dann bin ich so um der Boss! that beautiful beautimous intro in a long time boys but uh your boy's back and uh we're popping off yet again on another capture point tournament i bet that uh, last little syllable there was a little uh wet i just heard the slap of the saliva on the microphone on that one but uh yeah uh we're, we're hopping back into it uh we can get the screen blocker off in a second but it's really uh we're just kind of waiting for the tournament to start off i'm actually participating in the tournament so we are going to go through my matches and well as long as i keep going we'll continue to watch my matches and then if we can find some time in between like if you know somebody's on there like second third game by the time we finish maybe we can hop in for some other stuff but i might just lose in the first round you never know it's your boy so you never know what's happening um so yeah that's pretty much the lowdown uh we're gonna wait for everybody to get to their shit together and get ready and uh yeah um and it's probably me who needs to actually get his shit together and uh, get ready i have seven discord notifications probably one of them is my opponent uh, a lot of them is uh uh umbrella spamming me in the dms oh umbrella why are you like me so much uh, blah 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 okay yeah 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 yeah, yeah. Umbrella complaining that he doesn't have time to play in his own tournament, like a loser, etc. And other things. Not cetera, but you know. <laughs> etc. The the Chad cetera. Alright, well, um, let's take a look at our little uh bracket here, and I can go over to the monitor for us if we want to do that. Where's my Where's my bracket, brother? Hey brother um okay cap point tournament here we go okay let's visit the site i think everything's ready let's see maybe what are settings bracket is a preview subject to change okay it doesn't look like it is finalized It'd be me versus lamb sauce king who is playing low cure um let's take a look at this preview bracket here just to look at all the fine folks playing uh let's see yeah, this works. Yes, 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 very good. Um, yeah, that. No, this. There we go. Okay, so we have Rainy Frog. We have Boo Delicious. Um, what is he playing? Toddbringer and Malice. Okay, already gross opponents here. Don't want to see that. Where's Egg? Very good. Um, High King the. Oh yeah. Oh yeah, we're gonna see a fat Greases in this in this hoe. This is gonna be great. And we got a lamb sauce king on low here, me on Orion, the Wood Elves, repping the underrated faction today. And uh let's see, the plague movie. Yep, Umbrella's rocking good old Kugath on his toilet of the gods, literally. 
and uh, Ryder's going with Tyrion, uh, which is, if you don't know Ryder, he's a fellow clanmate of XMT, and he is a Chad because he pretty much brings Tyrion almost exclusively, uh, you know, and then some and, and other stuff, but uh, mostly, mostly Tyrion. <laughs> mostly Tyrion. All right, so we're back into the games. All right, let's see what's up. Uh, is it ready, folks? Okay, we are live. Find your opponent. Next round, please. Yeah, so for this first round, I'm probably just going to do my own. And if we can try to get those out of the way quick, it would be good. So let's see. I think the... Well, the bracket said it was for change, but or it was subject to change, but let's see. Nope, that is the full one. So the one we just went over is the thing we are playing. I really want to play, but I'm busy. I'm bussy. I'm bussy? Oh. Mm -hmm. I will play in the next one with Aaron S. Hey, good... Good on you, anti kaiju. Thanks for stopping by, brother. Or if you can stick around, that'd be awesome. Too. And I just lost my voice all of a sudden. Need more tea and water. All right, so I am playing against uh, who was it? Lamb's House King. So let's shoot this guy some uh, little invites here. Damn. Oh, no. Damn. <laughs> uh, I. No, not I and zero. Lamb's House. And just Chad, Tyrion, fucking... Yeah, the writer just posted, like, the little intro, the campaign intro for Tyrion. He's pretty Chad. All right, let's get this out here. We do have a... Speaking of the Chaos Wars, we do have a good uh, army blocker here today, though. Look at this shit. Bam! It's Thomas. We all know this meme. We all love it. We all love it. And, uh, yeah, there we go. Okay, oh. Uh, yeah, let me send this guy a little, little code. A secret code. Only he and you guys now know. I guess... Wait, it's the position of this thing? No, you can't see it. <laughs> you cannot. And what is the first map we are playing on today? Uh, we are playing on... Uh, Sars... Or Sars, Cars, Cursed Oasis. Never know how to say that. You know. Put it in the game. <laughs> Seen it plenty of times. Do not know how to say it. Okay, so we're going to be playing Wood Elves here, right? And he is playing, uh, what, 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 a Lokir? Okay. So Lokir actually is a bit spooky. I mean, if he's on the dragon, he can definitely beat the shit out of Orion. Um, Orion, we're definitely bringing the Cloak of Isha. Probably Foe Seeker at the minimum, and we might try to fit in his other abilities as well. Against the Dark Elves is rough, because we basically have to infantry stomp them, basically. Uh... Let's see if there's a preset that maybe... No, because they won't have a Ryan in it. <laughs> None of my presets have a Ryan in it. Even though he's a Chad, and I should put him in more of my builds. Okay, so we need to stomp that front line to get to the juicy innards here. We can sort of not really contest the mobility game. We can play a little counterplay with, like, Stagnites, maybe. We have enough Spearmen, so... Get a front line of, like, Eternal Guard here. Maybe go a little cheaper to... Yeah, no, maybe not. We really want to win the front line. Um, yeah, we might want to go box, actually. Not box, but, like, let's see. Boat army. We have... Uh, how much one is this? I think we want to play it like we're going corn, but then we can actually have more funds because Dirthy costs more. Oh, yeah, so, 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 so. Let's go to Dirthy here. We grab our boy. Get rid of his shit items here. His shitems. I like this build. I think we can maybe draw, I don't know. We might need to try to stomp even more. I just don't know how we do that with the good old wood elves. Does this lady have, uh, let's see. Can get dwellers, let's get dwellers. Okay, we're going crazy, we're going insane today. Uh, and then maybe if we get rid of the Firebark Elders, just because they're not really going to do shit, we can afford, like... Um... Two Gladeguard? Two Gladeguard? Yeah, yeah. Then we just pray that our spears, like, actually hold up. That could be... That could be a, a thing. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, okay. So we're just... We're just praying that, like, our infantry will somehow just win the day here. 
and like in, by infantry I mean our spears versus his cavalry as well. Uh, we have 130 left. This is a weird power stone, blessing the ancients. I don't know. 130, huh? Can I like upgrade into something here? Get another like wilder ranger or another war dancer. Yeah, we could get another war dancer. That'd be kind of cool. That'd be kind of cool. Just need to walk a ranger. I think we go war dancer. Yeah, yeah, we go war dancer. Yep, let's do it. Okay. Uh, I am ready. Let's play this. Uh, I guess we give some chevrons to stuff. What, what can we? Okay, we can actually give chevrons to our archers here. Yeah, sure. Yeah. Or do we just give chevrons to the? Oh, we give chevrons to the great stacks. Duh. It's like one chevron though. Two. Oh, one. Okay. Yep. Boom. Done. Golden. Yeah, we're ready. He's ready. So there's some cool things we can do with the schemes here. We have some new uh, color schemes from the rails, very nice. We're gonna go darker than the night itself with the Mildred, very cool scheme. Okay, ready and up, let's get this fucking thing out of our way. Skabushka. And uh, let's also get our stream on the correct side of things, bam. Okay, there we go, there it is. Everything is, yeah, everything's going according to plan. It is funny, my, like, little live stream tracker, like, in YouTube is always, like, a billion years behind. So I should check that, but I know I can just check my, like, OBS to see what, uh, what it actually looks like. But it just freaks me out every time I see it. I'm just like, oh, no, the blockers are still up. Okay, that's, this is the wrong map. <laughs> All right, well, uh... I did wrong map. Same armies reload. All right, I'll try not to look. What it is, what it is. Hopefully, we should be able to reload with the armies if we just concede real quick. That was a goober move. What a goober I am. What a goofy goober. Battle. I'm not gonna look at his shit. No, no, I'm not trying to look. Okay, well, there you go. Um, yeah, let's uh get uh land battle capture point. We are on um, cars always. It's boom, 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 bam. There we go. Okay, there we go. We're good now. We're solid. We're live, baby. We're live. Live from Saturday night. It's Goji making a fool of himself. All right, but yeah, so you can see we might, like, unavoidably, I saw glimpses of his army. We might be fucked here, boys. We might be fucked for this first one. I'm not going to lie. This might be rough. But let's see how it goes. We do have healing. We do have... Um, some pretty high damage potential here with those stag knights um and we should be able to deal with a lot of his calf but uh you know he's just gonna have the agency on us and as what else as tragically as this is it's just gonna be the case because your mobility's too shit and like expensive for you to really go not spear boxy here eternal god, eternal god. So we can, we should be able to get decent damage with these guys. Uh, uh, bam. 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 And then I guess we're gonna have to close. The... Not that way. Not that way, Buster Brown. You wanna face the correct way. Yeah, yeah. we got Orion in the mid. Like Chad. You guys, I guess I can just kind of go right here. Uh, for now, we probably want them on the missile resist if we see that they have a lot of missiles. I 
If not, whatever. Um, we'll survive. And then the calf. And do we want to try over a little sneaky sneak? Probably not. I mean, actually, maybe. I mean, if he doesn't pay attention here, we could potentially. Man, this is not a good map for to play wood elves into. Look at this shit. Tragic. secret or anything but you know okay let's get our groups up we should probably stay together you can go there you guys are the next most important and the rest of you are just a fucking blob so there you go bada boom bada bang all right i'm ready when he is there we go let's get it Okay, this is a lot of freaking cab. Cab to the point where we need to go here. Yeah. Okay. Pivot. Yeah, we just couldn't get our cab isolated out here. The mo if we left it alone, it would have just been total destruction of the wild or great stagnites, whatever their name is. Yeah. So we want to shoot down, I mean, obviously we want to shoot down the Cold War Knights probably the most, but after that, I mean, shooting any of his infantry is like, alright. After everybody is settled here, we're going to full surround as expected. Um... We just want to try to angle our archers so we're not getting too much blocked by the trees or anything. Oh, that's a nice volley. Nice. Get fucked. <laughs> Get fucked, bastard. Alright. Yeah, yeah, that, that was a good volley, though. Let's see if we can, uh... So you can set on the point here. And that's fine. But, uh, he's now moving up a little too far. We can probably just sit there right there. Guys, we'll await their fate here. Okay, so he's just gonna move around. I mean, we can just push him off this point so we'll but you I mean, I'd really invite him to try to take out uh, Orion. I mean, I don't want to engage too much. You know. yeah, okay. you have my spear. And then uh, we can go try to grab this point with Orion. The issue is Loke here is a bastard. I mean, at least he has bonus for infantry and not large, which Orion is large. Um, yes! um, These guys, oh yeah, just screw the, these guys up. Screw the witch elves up. Okay, what is a swords the dread knights? Um, Dang, these are Stagnards are getting destroyed, that is so sad. So the witch elves are just going to clean through our stuff, that's kind of the issue here. Oh, but if we get a fat little... Here. This could be cool. This right here. Yeah, that's, that's, that's happening. Man, why did he, he dodged that very quickly. He dodged that really quickly. <laughs> that was kind of odd. <laughs> that was before, before it happened. Lab sauce, you better not be dream sizing, bastard. Oh, bastard. Okay, um, let's see. So, our archers are getting wrecked here. Everything's getting wrecked. Um, yeah, we're gonna screw you. We're screwed. It's just tragic because it's such a horrible matchup. But I think next time we go 
I don't even know what you're getting. We have to do a full monster match then. It feels like it's... No, I guess we can sit in this beer blob and pray. That's about all we got left. Yeah, cause we're done. We're done. Okay, you need to come back here. So I don't know. You, ma'am, ma'am. Hmm. So we pop the stone. We have 42 wins of power left. We might be able to do something here if we if we can uh, survive. Oh, oh, oh. This is kind of wild. Uh, let's see if we can snipe out. Uh, I wonder if we can do it here. No, we, can, we can't. We'll just have to. Uh, it's up to shoot right. Actually, just shoot right here. Just shoot right the crap out of these guys. Oh, he's rampaged. Um, I think that we need a girl, you ready. should probably not get rampaged. Okay. If we can get rid of all the witch elves, we might have a chance here. Oh, she's rampaged too. Okay, well. Uh, how long did it last? Oh, is it eternal? As long as you're talking? Okay, she might be scared though. We need to go. Use the mess of the gods. Routing. Okay, do it. Boo, we're about to get wrecked. Power difference isn't that cool. Or, value difference isn't that cool. Okay. Hey, she is just dying. She, like... I tried to move her back through combat. Uh, through these guys. And then she just, like, got rampaged anyway. Orion! Isha wills it! Swiftly! With well, speed! He is what it is. Son of Kronos! Okay. Uh... Withdraw! Get there. Please, woman, come back! Okay, yeah, we're, we're toast. We're toast. And she does not have much left. Yeah, she's dead. Okay. GG. GG to the boy. Let's save the time there. I probably should have saved that replay. We'll get it in the, uh... In the files. Yeah, Ryan just didn't do shit. Unfortunately, he's kind of a meme lord. Uh, what was more disappointing was... Just the word answers, you know? Like, it's just like you have no good... Mobility options, what elves, in this... In, the, in game three, unfortunately. Which is kind of why you go with the, uh, the, uh, I'll get the, I'll get the replay. Um, I'm just going over the stats real quick. And the Witch Elves absolutely butchered the front line. Um, Spell Sanger didn't, she got what I mean, she tried to get off a thing, but he moved, like, before, like, as soon as it was being cast, which was rough. Um, I think that was him just moving away, but... It looked really sus, but it was like, yeah. Uh, um, yes. Okay, cool. All right, bet. Let's, uh, let's do it. Um, GG. I have it through auto. Yeah, I can just go into the, uh, uh auto save right here. Go, oh, oh, screw off. Trying to make me open it. I don't want to open it. I want to rename it. We don't. Dark Elf. Round one? Yes. Too many replays now. I need to rename stuff. Okay. Uh, I believe... Is this three matches on the same one? This can't be right. So... Two more. Yeah, Ryan didn't do great. Um, we definitely got to take a different approach. We got to really try to just bunker bust the front line with everything we've got. So we, I think we need to reevaluate stuff here. He is...
Uh, he does need more mass. I mean, if you look at him, he has uh, 1,600, and for how large he is, it makes no sense. So having him be more mobile would be a lot better. And being able to shoot while moving again, actually, he brings up a good point. Um, but the wood of geometry. Yeah, the geometry failed me, Boosh. I tried it. Okay, so let's get the blocker up for some surprise. Peekable. Um, bam. Okay. Gonna bring Orion. Uh, we're gonna try something a little wild here. We might bring like a fully stacked Orion, bro. Fully stacked. Well, maybe not fully stacked, but like almost fully stacked. Like that. Or maybe actually just that. Okay, almost fully stacked. Then we need two of these guys. Uh, two of these guys, I think. I think that's the bare minimum. I think in order to like actually do anything, we have to do that. And then. Hmm. And let's see. I think we have to go full wild here. Full wild, boys. I go. Like maybe some of these bros. Um. And then we're just so low. Like, that's the thing, is, like, you cannot bring a melee... Like, it's hard to bring a melee rush, like, a good melee rush here. So maybe we just drop one of these guys, and then just, like... Huh. Could go look at those. Damn, that doesn't even get us six infantry units. And we'd be without a caster too, which is just no void. Okay, let's 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 drop it all. Let's get uh, a run here. Grab that one by ability. I think it's a best of three. I don't know why this guy left. Or wait, is it a best of one? Please tell me it's a best of one so we can move on here. Okay, great. It is a best of one, right? Okay, great. So we're moving on. Uh, we need more uh, content here, baby. All right. Uh, let's see. Send replays. Oh, yeah. Everybody send me the replays. Juicy replays. Oh. All right. Um. So I think we're going on to the next round real quick. Uh, and if we get spare time, we'll just go over the replays. We'll just pop them in and call them good. And boom, bam, bum. That what was that last word was not actually a word. <laughs> I just said boom bam bomb. It was a bond, I don't know. Um Okay, Lamb Sauce versus Ryder. And Iron Zero versus whoever wins out of Rainy Frog and Booge. Okay. So peeps, you should have open spec slots always, just so I can hop on. This spec slots open peeps. I'll keep it what it opens it. Right. I believe this is the one. I am the one, the son of God. This is the one. Oh yeah, let's get that. Let's get that. Hang on. Okay. So we're getting High Elves, Tyrion versus Lokir. The Sundering is just a bunch of elf on elf violence, which I am very much a fan of. I uh, can't tell you how much I hate up now. I actually uh, have a healthy respect for the Wood Elves. They're very isolationist and they don't care about their weird elven politics. They do have some weird hippie stuff going on. But I mainly gain the respect from playing Blood Bowl. And if you don't know what Blood Bowl is, uh, Wood Elves are very good in that game, and they're very fun to play because they just, like, are super fast, but they're, like, super weak to getting, like, punched in the face, but they're so fast that, like, it makes up for a lot of stuff, they, and their war dancers are just, like, god-tier pieces in Blood Bowl. They're so good. I'm actually playing in a, um, a, uh, German league that's hosted by Exploding Hamster, a, a fellow Total War creator who, uh, is German. He's, you know, he's all a little fan base over there in germany and across the world i'm sure uh but he is a cool dude and i played in this uh league before i'm gonna casually stream it uh later probably in the week for you guys 
as I ramp back up to glory. So I ramp my way to glory. But yeah. So we're seeing high elves, dark elves, Noln outskirts this time. This is a more a larger map. So you have more wiggle room to do elven fuckery if you wish it. Um it does have a little slant. It has some trees, but it has of course has a good wide open space near the cap point. So you uh you have uh, lots, it's pretty fair, but lots of fun stuff to do. And uh, I'm expecting a very entertaining, elfy game here. Um, what I do want is a donut. No, I already had a donut. Actually, I had a donut and dunked it in some tea. I, I know that's probably the most British thing you've ever heard, but I am not British just uh, trying to pretend to be one playing all these warhammer games and shit all right we are seeing a fat Tyrion uh shadow warrior like stock build with some dragon princes and shit uh versus basically the same build that uh lamb sauce brought against me which is cab heavy witch elf heavy run at your face have some harpies and low gear and you're good to go you are good to go. So yeah, I like this map a lot. Uh, this map, I think, is pretty uh, fun. Br brings out some pretty fun gameplay here. You have a lot of different stuff you can do. Not wide enough for you to go kind of like wherever with it. Um, but yeah, it is, I think, one of the better conversions we have done. All right, I should have put this on before. Well, actually, no, this is perfect because that bug that actually, if you change your settings, you'll go back to a regular um, camera, which would be great because I actually want that. Um, that's not at all what I was, what I just did here. Uh, there we go. Mount cinematic smoothing up. Which I know this it should be should be up that way, but nobody knows. Nobody knows. And we probably want this up a little bit. Okay, my changes. Resume game. So now we're down in a regular town. So let's go over the armies real quick. We'll start with the Rider of Rohan. We have a Tyrion with classic martial mastery. I don't think you can deselect like that, but he has Heart of Avalorn and just that. Uh, yep, he's on his mount. Some some stupid Elven horse name. Uh, Made of Life, Life Bloom, Earth Blood. Uh, as you saw, we have some Spearmen, and then four Shadow Warriors. Count four. One Dragon Princes, and then a core of Illyrian Weaver Archers. We can take off the. Uh, uh, these guys as well. Just because it's a little hideous. A little hideous. I don't need all this stuff for the cinematic stuff, but you know. Uh, the movement orders and ranges are nice. So, uh, yeah, just the same build for, um, what's his name, Lamb Sauce. If you guys weren't here for the previous game, you just brought a bunch of Witch Elves, which are good uh, anti-infantry light armor, but kind of give stuff frenzy so they can't move or do any other orders, which is really nice. Then there's a large cav core of Cold One Knights and uh, Dark Riders, which are just the light cav. And he's basically just going to run it, yeah. Um, he does have a Lore of Shadows caster with Enfeebling Foe and no cost Mystic Mind Magic. So he's basically going to DPS some stuff, slow it down, and then debuff it. We have Lokir, which I believe just has Helm of the Crack uh, and Dread Dudes. So he has his, like, dueling kit prepared today. Um, I don't know if I took off the screen block. I did. Okay, thank God. Thank the Lord! Okay, so... We are having some sisters. Oh, and there's some sisters. Totally forgot about those guys. Uh, but they are going to absolutely butcher these cold one knights um, if left to just shoot freely. A lot of the cab is charging up front, which could do some damage, but ultimately is just getting them uh, free pokes by these archers as the witch elves have yet to engage. So a little premature uh, action by this cab here. Also, charging into dragon princes is not kind of wise for either of these calves. I mean, combined, like, maybe the cold ones can trade up very well, but Dragon Princes just hit so hard on the charge and are very good in prolong as well. Uh, okay, so the Illyrian Reavers finally break, so we might see some Cold One Knights get through. 
Dark Riders behind them are getting routed off though, so we don't see a lot of pressure on this Archer Core, which the longer it's left open, the more brutal. Uh, sisters are being compromised though, which this is the most important part out of uh, all of them, even though Shadow Warriors are pretty brutal uh, late game in themselves. Let's see the damage value. So Riders slightly up as the um, melee kind of begins. Those Witch Elves are going to be tearing apart all of those Spear Infantry. Even uh, the high melee defense of the regular Spearmen are not enough to cut through or to, to stand up to the Witch Elves' uh, anti-infantry. and you know, Not poison, but I think they just have a, yeah, they have Frenzy as well. So they just have pretty gross stats when they're uh, high leadership and running in your face. Screaming naked, uh, you know, Witches of the Dark Elves. They're pretty... Uh, pretty shameless here. Uh, the Shadow Riders need to start probably kiting back earlier. Um, you are seeing that all the cab is now compromising them, and this one Dragon Prince is just being caught up finishing off this Portal Knight, which again, they are trading up. They're going to lose, but they're trading up very well. Um, so that is a good thing about these Portal Knights. Uh, they're kind of like mini boar boys in a sense, where they just trade so damn well into uh, higher uh, uh, cost large targets, especially in the cavalry. Um, and it looks like actually the once the front line starts evaporating for the High Elves, uh, the skirmish play on the back end is not going to save them, it doesn't look like. Uh, points, fortunately, is not coming into play this game, I don't think. I mean, Ryder could try to kite around, but I think it's probably around to him. He just doesn't have the killing power to take care of all these infantry units. Um, even if these archers do come back, and there's a good chance of them coming back, because there's no balance power, which for bad or for worse, can make for some interesting late game uh, scenarios. Competitive wise, it makes stuff uh, pretty wacky. Um, it, it, it's harmful in some situations when you just want something that totally is outnumbered and outgunned to just you know, route or kill itself um, with disintegration. Uh, but it's also interesting when it's just all mostly units routing and coming back and forth because that actually provides a much more dynamic uh, flow of play, in my opinion. The Shadow Warriors chasing through the woods, but again, they're just they're not going to have enough damage. Tyrion is a Chad, and actually, I don't even know if Loki wants to fight him one-on-one, -on -one, but he definitely wants to fight him when he's surrounded by Witch Elves, so he's probably just going to target them, because uh, he's out of control. Um, and he's just uh, attacking the Witch Elves instead. So there you go. The Shadowcaster is just sitting here like... Like, she doesn't need to do anything because you really... Oh, the Heart of Avalon Crocs gets Tyrion all the way back up pretty much. Uh, but then gets shanked by Loki for a little bit and is immediately going back down. Uh, but he is not going to carry this game, unfortunately. Uh, you know, some kiting happening back here, but we're seeing... Uh, let's see, we don't... We don't have the... Uh, I wish we could implement the uh, unit, like, numbers in this mod. But I think you can actually do it if you do the mod or the multiplayer UI mod. And then... Uh, it's compatible with our mod because there's actually a tournament being hosted um, in the future that includes both of those things so you can see all the good stats and unit numbers and stuff uh, EE versus uh, uh, okay or not or just let me uh, why can't you let me live uh, mother alright so uh, Tyrion didn't give that much value uh, Dragon Princess did pretty good, but again, they're just caught up fighting one Cold of Night forever. Uh, at first, the Sisters and Shadow Wars were dealing some good damage, but they definitely needed to back up a little bit. Uh, at the end of the day, he just didn't have enough stalling power for this massive uh, rush here. He needed a lot more infantry rather than these Illyrian Reaver archers. Unfortunately, Skirmish Cav in Game 3 are just not that great. Um, if he had a little more oomph to protect his stuff... He perhaps could have kept these guys online longer, maybe focused fire some cold ones down. And as long as you focus fire the cold ones down, you can probably kite the Witch Elves to death, more than likely. But GG's. Uh, it was very well played on both ends. I think there was a little bit of a misplay at the beginning from Lame Sauce King, but he did end up breaking through the line and then just compromising these guys anyways. So it was well worth it. Alright. Let's see... Oh, delicious. Fun one here. You got some Heaven's Magic and Pistols. Oh, yeah. So we got a lot of good replays here. Depending on the time of everything, I might cut the stream off when the tournament ends. But if we have some extra time after, we might go over some of those replays as well. And just have a little fun with it. Watch some uh, scraps from round one, two, and three here. I think there's going to be a third round. Let me check. Uh, nope, there's just two rounds and then the finals. 
So we'll probably check those out just uh, just for completion's sake here. Because um, the stream hasn't been going on for that long. Alright, uh, so... And Bouge and I think Iron Zero just finished. This was a 6 of 1. Yeah, 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 yeah. I'm pretty sure they just won. Or just finished. So we should be getting to the finals pretty quickly here. And then we can go over the other ones after the after the finals. Um, I'll just stick in here then and wait for the finals to occur. Nice. Who won? Let's find out who won between Bouge and uh, I and Zero. And once we do, uh, we will grab them into the Sauce King's realm and we will see the best of three for the finale. That was round one I beat Rainy Frog. Oh, okay. Very nice. Then I guess I haven't finished it yet. Uh, so actually, let's download all those things. Well, actually, we'll download them all after after the final, unless this takes forever to get to this uh this this finale game here. Uh, you know, we don't want too much dead time, but I also don't want to be kind of confused into where these were. Actually, I mean, we can just download them now. Fuck it, this will do it. Okay, I'll download this one. Into replays. Save. Okay, we're gonna go. Save. And then. I think we need the. Yeah, the fat kid one. There we go. Okay. Here we go. Oh. Crap, I think I downloaded a couple of those into the weird places. Let's see. Oh, no, no. We did a good. We did a good, Pa. All right, so while we're waiting for finals, I'm going to hit the chat real quick and see where finals is at. Oh, I do. We have a lobby already open for you to spec our game. Great. Copy. Back. The one, two, three password classic. I, I love how everyone does that so, like, anyone could get into anybody else's lobby. Oh, we are ready. My bad. I wasn't. I wasn't paying attention to you. No. <laughs> like, I just wasn't looking at uh, stream. Because I am rusty, my friends. I am rusty as hell. Just rusty as hell. But it looks like we are starting right now. Wurzag versus the Toddbringer. Can an OG matchup from game one determine the fate of this tournament? I think so. so we're seeing from Warzag uh, some trolls here, classic stone troll and the, um, well, what other name? Forgot what the terror causing, like, stink stink trolls are called. <laughs> they, have, they have some kind of special name, and I'm totally whipping. Uh, but then we have the broken tusk mob along with some war boys here. Oh, interesting. So my camera resets every time. That's kind of. Yeah, we can click on that one. Okay, let's start So that's moving. Just messing with a little bit. Plot changes. Excellent. Okay. So. Let's start with the greenies because I am biased and I like them more. <laughs> okay, so we have Wurzag on a pig, on the Spleen Ripper. He's got Effigy to get Gazamork. Interesting. Fistigork. We got both gods included in this package. We have Frenzy. We have Power to Wa. Wurzag's Revenge with the Miscast Chance. And Bonewood Staff, of course. And no, wait, 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 wait. No second item with the Bonewood Staff? Uh, 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 Squiggly Beast? That is surprising because that is a combo from hell so okay he's gonna have less win regeneration than normal but there you go let's see the swamp things that's what these motherfuckers are called uh three trolls two of them stone the swamp things very good because they cause terror and you know, regen and have this odor that uh minus his melee attack very good stuff that is a combo here a little kit we have two board boys one of them being the regiment of renown which basically just gives encourage aura which is very nice uh yep there you go and better stats, of course. Then we have uh, four squigs. 
Four squigs, yep. Four squigs, four goblins, and the hammer of Gork. The hammer of Gork. As a long range artillery piece, which is surprising. Uh, what, what is that, uh, static effect? Is that discouraged? I don't think so. Something else. Something else that I'm not remembering because I haven't taken that unit in a billion years. One billion years. All right. We are seeing a lot of war wagons. No, two war wagons, which are gross, but a very effective unit on the Empire roster at the moment. And for the HQ, we have Morris Todd Bringer with like all of his shit. A mid lane Rubang, White Cloak of Ulrich, uh, Blood Roar, very cool for his uh, Demogriff mount or uh, Griffin mount. Um, hold the line. Yeah, he has all of his crap. So very cool. We have a Deathcaster with the Fate of Buna and Spirit Leech. Very nice. And then the passive. Then, of course, we have the two War Wagons of Doom. Very good unit. Very meta right now at the moment. Very good stuff. A lot of infantry, which is the Mantide special. We have uh, one, two, three halberds, two, three spearmen, four spearmen, uh, silver bullets, which is pretty cool. Or no, Sterling's Revenge, which is the free company militia, the run and gun boys. They have immune to psychology, arm piercing missile strength, very good. Then we have two Empire Knights. Yep, count of two. And a cannon. And that'll round out the builds. Let me switch to the uh, stream here, and then let me look at some stuff we got for Star. I have medium size. Uh, do you guys have any resources? 90? 90. 3. 45. Is that true? 40. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh. I mean, yeah, it does kind of matter. If you guys are really cool with it, I mean, you're in the same game, but, like, it's just, uh, it's just different. I, like, it will of uh yeah okay cool they're just restarting little little mishap not too big of a deal i'll just have to go and and switch out their unit sizes there um but yeah ultra and large do uh do affect the uh the magic play unfortunately and a bunch of different other stuff it's actually quite a big difference uh in way you know uh which is why everybody was bitching when uh when you know warhammer 3 launched and everything was on ultra and opt optimized quote unquote to be on ultra that's why everybody in the community was like Rah! because uh it changes a lot of stuff and you know no offense to the ca team that made warhammer 3 but uh you know they didn't really consider all that crap uh, for Immortal Empires and the DLC team, I would assume, because uh, they just kind of did it, and then um, we're like, yeah, yeah, just figure it out, <laughs> you know, which is just absurd. So we already went over the armies, but uh, you know. they're ultra now. They're big, extra thick, extra big thick. Wait, we stopped complaining about that? I don't know if we stopped, but it's just been, you know, too... Uh, Claims to a point of near death, you know. At least, at least my camera like smoothness or the cinematic smoothing is staying. I'm tired of going in and switching my camera settings, so we are just gonna leave it in here. Smoothness is all right, anyways. Um, yeah. Very surprising. Uh, the most surprising pick out of this like two armies, I would say, is just not having Squiggly Beast on Morzag. Uh, the reason that's weird is because you basically get a lot more wins of magic uh, every time you're casting if you have the power of the law and then you know uh squiggly beast which is like 60 so you're getting like basically a constant um 140 percent like power recharge which constantly is a insane amount for sure like it's a lot uh and it basically lets you expend a lot of your mana very quickly um he does have an army that can pretty much take advantage of that he has a lot of models um and he's going to be probably doing some rushing um, yeah, he has a Hammer Gork too, so he's going to be doing some stuff. I mean, that cannon isn't going to absolutely obliterate it unless it can hide, like, behind this formation or something. That's why this map's interesting. That's why I think this map's interesting, because there's so many different routes of play you can do if you want to mess around with the terrain, you know, and try to really, like, use the terrain to your advantage if you don't want to take a head-on engagement. Uh, but, yeah, this thing is going to get crumped by an Empire Cannon. Uh, that's just a fact. 
It's just a hard fact, brother. Um, and uh, yeah, you're gonna, it's gonna it's gonna be great. It's gonna be great. Rusty errors. I didn't I didn't even get them on the first go around. We have two goblin archers. One of them being the rusty errors, the night goblin archer. Prism of renown. Good old sundered armor. The two little wolf riders that are gonna do jack and or squat to the empire knights. But then maybe we can catch some outriders, which I also didn't notice he had last time. So we're just catching a bunch of different stuff we didn't catch last time. Okay, cannons moving up. They're, they have the point in sight, but it's not quite enough to get to the uh, the army here. Let's see, Boris Toddbringer. Yeah, he's just got a lot of ability. So, like, this guy in melee is going to be an absolute menace. Um, and especially with his, you know, leadership debuff of the Blood Roar, he can potentially... <laughs> Duration of miscast chance 100%. Okay, but, uh, yeah, um, it's gonna be very annoying for some of this, uh, greenskin, uh, units, because they will tear out pretty quickly, because they are greenskin units. But, they also fight really hard, so if he gets, start getting just molly uh, that could be a problem as well. Alright, we're seeing them slowly move up, they're posturing, they're posturing. Getting the, getting the right, uh, little formations now. Yeah, he is waddling up with his war wagons, shooting, wasting some ammo into these goblins. Very much not worth it from gobos. Uh, they're just 300 gold. Every ounce of it. Well, okay, there's a lot of ammunition for these things. So this is going to be a bold strategy. You're just not going to be able to catch these things with wolf riders. You can try. Actually, Warzai could pin one of these things right now. Pin one of these things. Boom. Grab this. Grab your boar boys. Slam. Bam. Thank you, man. But the boar boys are a little out of position. And these guys are gonna route off so quick, man. You had to you had to pull that off a little bit. Like you overextended, but you needed to move up these uh boy boys fast enough. And he's not even trying to pin them with the other Zag here. These guys are getting caught though, actually, surprisingly. They are getting trapped because they're trying to run directly through. They went kind of back into the side. Okay, this is ugly. This one unit of uh war wagons might be absolutely screwed here. Oh, they're just going down. We need and we don't have a life caster. So whatever damage is done to be more than permanent. <laughs> permanent, that was a very loud key. Um, but they will probably be coming back. Man, do, wait, did these guys just friendly fire the crap out of their war wagon? Did I see that right? Was that anybody else? No? Okay. Um, Spirit Leeching on Wurzeg, a classic move. You actually do want to try to prevent the Greenskins from engaging for as long as possible. Uh, mostly to get your Spirit Leeches off on Wurzeg, because 90% of the time it is going to be Wurzeg. Because he's just a very, very good lord. The optimal lord uh, in most situations. Uh, I will say Azag is better in some matchups due to his speed, elusiveness, health, and the fact that he has terror and uh, death magic. So those two combined are a very good uh, little combo. Uh, Jurassic Air is getting way overextended, though. Uh, Boris flopping on. I thought he was going to attack, but he just kind of sat there instead. I know the squids or whatever could respond, but this guy really could just wrap these guys off and just prevent this damage from being happened. Being happened. Happening. The damaging. And, uh, really just overall, you know, you need, you need to start terrorizing stuff, basically. You need to get your money's worth without all those uh, upgrades Boris has. And he's going to dive right into the backfield. I don't like this. Oh, maybe he's going for the hammer? Still not a great move. I mean... He potentially could get it offline. Uh, just swamp things might be able to surround him in time, but probably not because of his speed. Uh, the green teams are engaging, starting to just run roughshod through the front line of the Empire here. Squigs chasing outriders, but they can just beat up these spearmen if they want to as well. Uh, Sturm's Revenge just totally got obliterated uh, by like two squigs, goblins, and the swamp fage. Uh, running into spearmen, uh, even with their anti-large and, you know, decent stats for their cost, they're just not gonna, not gonna get it. Um, so Durusty Errors are firing into Boris. They are gonna miss some of their shots because they're archer units. And, oh, it does get pinned, though, so we will actually get, uh, pincered here by some armor sundering goodness. Uh, and the cannon totally should have been actually just running absolute just holes through uh, Spleen Ripple here. 
but just uh, focused on these archers a little too much, I think. I think getting rid of Verzag is both more important than to stay in the game. We're looking at the new value. Uh, got differential about 600, so pretty close still. About a unit's worth of difference. The Boris here is slapping up on some squig herds and the stone troll. Will his blood roar be enough to do anything here? He can't actually route off to Swamp King, but he could do it to the stone trolls or to the squigs. These uh, halberds should probably be engaging more. They might have dropped orders tragically. That could very prominent in uh, the game, unfortunately. Uh, used to be a meme that uh, Dov plays with Spout all the time, where he'd be like, oh, my dropped orders, look at my units, and they're killing themselves, why? Uh, and that was a joke, but now it's very, very serious. <laughs> it very much is real. Uh, and uh, yeah, it happens all the time. So just double check your unit orders, guys. I would recommend that to anybody playing the game. Make sure your units are going where they want to go because sometimes they just do not uh, whistle the first go or they get caught by something and then just stop for no very reason. These are the times we live in. It's a tragedy. Okay, these war wagons coming back. These guys actually, nope, they're pretty much done. Uh, Green Tide is looking healthy here. A lot of the skirmish is about to be compromised, so a lot of this value is about to go down the drain. And there's just not any killing power left for the Bouge and the Force of the Empire. Uh, the Squig Herd getting into Outriders just really shouldn't. I mean, these guys are 84 speed. These Squig Herd should not be on top of these guys. That being said, um, Greenskins are just running everywhere. Now, here comes the trouble time. So, where's Egg's dead? Uh, Toddy's alive. We still have Archers. We still have uh, some Gorgoyles here. Where are the Gorgoyles? Are they living? Do they live? If they don't live, potentially could be a problem here, actually. Oh my god. Oh, the, the, the horridness of the route that is going on because of Wurzag's death. So, Wurzag getting sniped out here was a huge turning point. Um, that skyrocketed his value, too, as soon as Wurzag died. Uh, and Horus might reign supreme here by just routing off all these green skin infantry and stuff. And. This is kind of the uh, the weakness of Warzag, right? He's very squishy. Uh, if you don't bring the right build in tandem with him, uh, you can absolutely get uh, punished for getting your lord sniped. And he's, he's, he's relatively hard to protect once you are in the late game and once you've run out of both of his nets. He can be very sus. He can be very sus. Uh, but... Most of the time, he's the optimal lord. He's a really good lord, but he's still squishy for what he is. So Boris actually is probably going to carry the game from here uh, because I don't know if this, the trolls will have enough leadership, even the swamp things. Uh, God, what am I doing here with my controls? So uh, the swamp things even kind of run in terror to the, the, the toddy because the blood roar is just a straight leadership debuff it's not terror or fear so it will lower their leadership and it's already pretty lowered from their lord routing let's see what that uh, leadership's looking like here we have dem sustain uh lord is dead but yeah yeah so they're just really they're hurting a lot and their big uh squealing pig lord has died so it's a real tragedy for them i think it's game over and tragically which is a pretty good start to mid game for the orcs uh, turned into a late game disaster as Warzag was killed. Warzag, funnily enough, can like hide amongst other stuff here. He has rocks, he has a big tree, which is hilarious. You can position yourself behind this tree and it will deflect some shots. Um, or just retreat into the backfield if he's really getting low, you know? Uh, keeping him alive is more important than, uh, than using spamming his ability to the utmost in the late game. Uh, just because of the leadership of the green skins, you want to make sure all your units are uh, happy and healthy. Uh, they're rallying and they will come back. Balance of power will not dictate uh, when, when this game is over. So it is simply when Iron Zero has decided he doesn't have any fight left in him. And uh, honestly, these trolls with all their regeneration might be able to prove that he can come back if Boris slept up here. If the Death Wizard, depending on how much magic he has left and how much fight the boars can put up against these poor trolls. Uh, but these guys are looking pretty haggard in the words of Turin. Let's see where, or they, no, they're shattered. So they're gone. Um, a lot of the power, yep. And we are seeing, um, verse. Man, 
my nose always goes crazy. I think it's just because I'm not used to like talking for like so long. I need to get my like streamer chops up, you know? And that's that's why my nose is congested, not because I'm eternally sick. No. <laughs> um could very well be the case, actually. Let's take a look at some value here. Thirteen hundred on the Toddy Todd, very good stuff. Uh Amethyst Wizard got his dues as well. Ooh, this is a Hail Blaster Volleygun. I'm just all sorts of wrong. Um, still insane value, though. Uh, and if in close enough range, could take out the Hammer Gork for sure. Uh, I think one of the bigger um, blunders at the beginning of the game was these War Wagons, which I thought cost him a huge amount, but he ended up coming back with a sick Lord Snipe. Uh, damn, Warzag, only 400 value is tragic. He needs to spam those spells. Whoa. Um, sniping spells like a Gaze of Mork is just not that great in game three, so I'd recommend... If you're running Warzag, just run the AoE damage to bust through those lines faster and keep your uh, your mini wa and the Bonewood Staff uh, buff going because he buffs the entire the entirety of the map. Um, and other than that, yeah, it was just a good game. Uh, you know, there was some misplays on both sides, I think, and uh, the latter cost, cost Iron's Ear of the game, but it was both very well fought, so GG's. All right, so, so, uh, we are going to hop into somebody's, somebody's thing. Okay, uh, all right, I'm ready for the finales. Time for October. Okay. Is this the correct one? Is this the one? Or is this, uh, is this the one I just left and I'm just steaming? Nope. This is the correct one. Uh, let's look at the bracket to confirm that. Yep. Bouge and Lamsos. They are fighting each other to the death. And, uh, let's get a blocker up in here. Thomas, the protector of builds, rises once again to perform his duty. Hehe, <laughs> I said duty. Okay, I will be right back, guys. I'm going to blow my nose and get a big old swig of water. See if that will clear up these sinuses. But, you know, nothing promised. You must hear my nasally voice for the rest of the night. All right. So, cool thing about the finale of this particular tournament is, hmm, it's saying my audio stream's current bit rate is low. With, oh, oh, it's probably just because uh, <clears throat> I muted myself, <laughs> and the stream is like, "Why would you do this?" Um. So the cool thing about this tournament is it's Legendary Lord. It's on our Glorious Cat Point mod. Additionally, Umbrella's cool little design here essentially says, whatever lords you have beaten previously in previous rounds of the tournament, you get to then use in the finale as your like full arsenal. So uh, let's 
check here and I will list off what um, Lamb Sauce, aka Bully, my boss, <laughs> has. He has my Orion, and then he has Ryder's Tyrion, and then of course his own Lokir. Bouge has uh, Rainy Frog's Malice, Iron Zero's Warzag, and of course his own Toddbringer. So we're going to be seeing um, a Malice uh, Orion first game. So it's going to be a repeat of what uh, what happened last time. Now we're going to see if uh, <laughs> we're going to see if the Wood Elves can prevail here. I think it's a very hard matchup to uh, to crack here, especially with Malice being the menace he is. I'm pretty sure Malice beats Orion as well. I could be wrong. Orion is a Chad when he's at like 25% health because he gets a healing and a ward save. So he typically just kind of stays at the same health for like a very long time. Um, it can be very deceptive uh, when he uh, is actually about to die or not. And he's unbreakable, so he will, he will fight to the death every time. Cool thing is, uh, he, he used to fire while moving. Uh, now he does not. Uh, so that kind of sucks. He also needs a large uh, mass buff. Because essentially he's he's a large target, but he doesn't have the mass to actually move that well through. Like, you know, um, a lot of different infantry here. Like, let's see Treek and, and I'm just clicking on it from the, from the thing here. Uh, they have 1,500. Um, Orion is 1,600. So he has 100 more mass than a one model of Trekin, which is tragic. Uh, it's pretty, it's pretty messed up, considering he's like a super swift, like demigod of the forest type deal. You know, you would really hope he would be able to weave uh, through combat a bit more gracefully there, but uh, but no, no. Um, Orion's one of my favorite lords still, though. He, I mean, he looks like Mel Gibson, plays like Mel Gibson. Is just a wild, crazy man uh, who also has some pretty cool bound abilities, which is nice. Uh, you can actually stack up a lot of bound abilities uh, if you bring him and like uh, Zotes. You can just like spam bound abilities without costing any winds of magic. So that's kind of cool. Uh, but it's just the issue is like the Zotes are kind of expensive and more so like the rest of the Wood Elf roster are just too damn expensive to bring in in uh, tandem with the Zotes a lot of time. You just have too short of a uh, of a army, basically. Uh, not wide enough to contend with most factions. And also the fact that their missile game is just, like, trash now. That's one of the bigger factors. Is like, they weren't supposed to be technically, like, a crazy good melee faction, but the fact that their missiles, which was their main draw, are just so bad... It makes it rough. It makes it rough. Um, not gonna lie. Uh, Wood Elves are probably one of the most... And I more th thought about it, I just kind of screwed over Lamb Sauce by just playing Wood Elves and forcing him to have to take it. If if he goes to game three, like, imagine he just played, like, Dark Elves and, uh, what was it? Uh, High Elves. And then he then he's forced to play Wood Elves his last game, and he's like, no, damn you, Gojira. You have screwed me for the last time. <laughs> like, you know, just setting him up for failure. All right. So, we've seen a Malice Darkblade build with uh, very little mobility, which I think is a, actually probably one of the worst things you can do against Wood Elves, uh, because you can press the mobility like nobody's business. Um, like, it, you know, it, if he had brought a similar cav core to what lamb sauce brought he could absolutely obliterate those wild riders and stagnites like there is just it, it, it just wouldn't have been inconsequential it would have been over but now we're in a situation where in fact the wood elves have the uh they literally have uh, the agency in mobility which is not really the case usually in this day and age. All right, let's take a look see at the Wood Elf army first, because I like them better in its video. So uh, Orion is taking just the Cloak of Isha, 
and that's fair because that's his best item uh, so there you go uh, it's really good regen really good uh, ward save just good um, spell singer very nice of shadows he uh, brought the same kit so male cosmos fine man and infeam info very good spells very good spells two uh glade or see, two glade guard with starfire shafts one with regular uh, little arrows we have three ward answers and four dryads and uh then the mobility core that i mentioned previously wild riders which i think are probably one of the most trash cab units in the game at the moment they are really cool looking. My super fast camera can slow down. And then uh, the Stag Knights, which are even more dope looking. But uh, yeah, they they just they're they're the Chad version. Uh, and even them, they're kind of like underwhelming slightly, just slightly, not like a ton. Look at Orion gonna run out there, grab the point, get some early early good stuff. I do like Orion if you go full like Vanguard too. Like maybe you bring like us the. Uh, Wild, uh, wild Woods Cast? Probably, uh, wild, what, what the fuck am I thinking for? Not Wildwood Rangers. Um, uh, the, whatever the 360 degree firing uh, arch for the uh, archers for the Wood Elves are called. I'm forgetting what they're doing. Something scouts. Um, so for the Dark Elves, we are going Malice Dark Blade. He is on Spite, it looks like. Yep. He's got the Demon's Curse, the Blood Price. And just a bunch of other stuff that's just uh, gross. Uh, the Warp Sword of Cain, yep, very good. I mean, he just has, like, these gross three items that are just absolutely brutal. Um, makes him and Zarkin actually viable, which is super cool, but just an absolute menace as well in the late game. Uh, Flock of Doom and Curse of Honor here. Uh, I, I don't mind Flock of Doom... Curse Honor here, I saw it, I feel like they're just it's just a little overpriced. Eleven is a lot. Uh, then for the missiles we got three dark shards with shields, um, four bleak swords, two black guard. I just don't know what the dark shards are for. You know? Like look at this unarmored, like just squish front line that's actually gonna be able to run over bleak swords. I think this is just a horrible well. He, he does have some uh, Witch Elves and Sister of Slaughter that can run Roughshod on the entirety of their melee army, along with the Black Guard as well. Um, and it just depends how all these interactions go down. I mean, you know, the, the Bleak Swords will hold very well against Dryad. They will lose to War Dancers. Um, and if the Dark Shards are able to get some good shots off on, like some of the cav or even some of the archers here and trade with the archers because these guys are silver shielded so they actually will trade much better uh, into these lane guard than you would think uh that being said like it you, you just have no agency in the mobility game when uh when you really can just push that as dark elves and i think that was the biggest issue here um so i think genuinely like the wood elves do have a good chance here um Blade Guard, though, are kind of, like, a little out of position. They're not getting their shots off properly here. Um, not, you know, not properly, but they're a little too back to getting the juicy targets. Our Wild Riders are absolutely beasting through Dark Riders, um, as expected. Stag Knight's going to come through, and now it's going to be up to just some Black Guard and some other stuff. Well, actually, <laughs> the uh, Dryads ran right through this... Uh, dark shard like this infantry formation and this is the thing is like i just don't know what this build's supposed to accomplish here uh, you know not to shit all over we just build a bunch but uh yeah i don't know what this is <laughs> uh it's it's gonna be real hard um ooh, and now that these guys are up and close they can take total aim at these sisters uh and just start bringing them down because these guys are the only things that can really beast through any of this stuff i mean you know, yeah, Bleak Swords actually are getting pretty dunked on by those Dryads. Good to know. So Dryads do beast on uh, Bleak Swords, but I'm pretty sure they get beat up by uh, Witch Elves, which is kind of a problem. Is that I think Dark Elves can beat you at most facets of the game if they choose to. I think Booge decided to play against Wood Elves playing their own game, which is like, I'll be shooty and kind of geometry angular. And you're just like, well... They have longer range, better DPS, uh, pound for pound, 
their like calf is like better, but the thing is you can just outnumber them so hard and out trade them like with hold one nights that it doesn't really matter that they technically like win one v one because they're never gonna really be winning you. Um, and I'm pretty sure Booge's army is just gonna get picked apart here. I will say that these war dancers are gonna get. Uh, no, they're just they're just shafting these sisters just because they're out of uh, they're all out of place and uh, kind of by themselves all by myself with Orion uh, just gonna put the final nail in the coffin for those sisters the sisters and uh, Black Guard of Nagrond holding their ground but doing not a lot you know they just don't have time to react to these fast cannon which is not oh one rider rider is down though do we have a stagnant no great stack right here. So one wild rider down. I think that might be two wild riders because they're just that bad, man. Yeah, you see these guys, they're so squishy. Like these guys were in the perfect situation, got decent amounts of value, like compromised everything they wanted, and still just died, like, to the surrounding kind of uh, infantry that got their hands on them. Briefly, however briefly. Uh Orion kind of kiting back, uh protecting the glade guard in this late game. We do still have some Dark Riders left. This could be big. If these guys could catch out some of the, uh, the Glade Guard, this could potentially give back agency to the Dark Elves and have Malice and his crew do whatever they want. Um, Dryad's chasing Dark Shards. Black Guard should probably be up there supporting or at least moving towards these Great Stag Knights. Uh, some Haggard Dryad's coming back to try to pressure these Dark Shards. Um... It's looking, it's looking real tight, and in fact, like the, the damage for the Dark Elves is higher. So overall damage, I would say, and like value, I guess the, the Dark Elves are kicking butt. Field position, however, I really do not like where they're at, aside from the fact that they nope, they no longer have these Dark Riders, so they can't really pressure these Glade Guard that well. Um, there's just no nothing keeping them from running away and shooting these black guard and dark shards to death uh the sisters did catch out some of the glade guard but orion and the war dancers are making short work of the depleted sisters that is a good good flock of doom though if there's overcast and i get some decent damage in that probably finish off the war dancers very nice and possibly let's see how the force three seconds and routes off the glade guard very nice flock of doom they're very clutch um we do have Great Stag Knights left, no healing for the Wood Elves, and we still have to deal with Malice Dark Blade. We do have a fully, like, available heal uh, for Orion, so he can sit at his 25% and be chill. He has uh, six ammunition left, so he can get some good shots into Malice, but I'd almost, honestly just throw it at the uh, Blackguard or something at this point. Uh, mostly because... Uh, he's gonna just transform and have an all new like HP pool, so it's really not worth just pursuing this douche who's just gonna regen his health entirely. Um, Dark Rider's getting finished off by the Great Stag Knights. I guess they weren't completely done. Sisters probably gonna get shot as well. Um, nope, 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 nope. Are these sisters getting forgotten about? So this could be crucial if these guys come back and slap the Glade Guard in the face. Could be very brutal. Um, this is a very interesting late game scenario though. So we're seeing some uh, stuff. Melkos coming down on the Malice here, slowing him down. If he does get some pretty good damage on Orion, it is risky going up against him, but you can just transform into Zarkon when you feel scared, and that was a good attack on Orion. He has a shit ton of weapon strength. Uh, Orion has 16 melee defense as well from the Demon's Curse. Luckily, he's circling him, not doing anything, but there's another good attack. Um, even with the ward save, that amount of uh, damage there is going to be quite lethal to the Orion. And actually, let's see. It uh, looks like the sisters ended up coming back from the depths of hell and uh, killing the Blade Guard from behind. Orion is getting caught out and deceased. And the Black Guard are just going to chill and chase down these Blade Guard, I think. The Dark Elves have actually managed to get this, and that is tragically how sad of a state Wood Elves are in in this game. Not saying necessarily that, uh, you know, either player played poorly. I just think the Wood Elves had uh, quite the number of advantages um, in terms of build compositions, and the Wild Riders, who are not even on the field anymore, 
just really couldn't pull their weight. Uh, but now it's really just kind of down to the fact that they, the Wood Elves can't kill uh, Malice. They can't kill Malice without a healthy Orion, and um, yeah, the Stag Knights are just not going to be able to do it for them. Uh, even though, let's see, who has capped the point the most? It is Wood Elves. They could try for a cap victory here and try to just take back the capture weight. And what you can do here is try to just plop the the dryads onto the onto the point and just uh, maybe pray that Malice can't capture the point back in time, but more than likely he's going to use some AoE uh, I think he has AoE damage in one of these, right? Uh, da, 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 da. Damage per second, yeah. Uh, Reaper of Souls is our common. Uh, it's pretty heavy metal and will probably route off those dryads even if they attempt to sit on the point here. Um, which he might have forgotten about, but you do want to chase off these black guard. Uh, Blade Guard fighting in here. You know, Bounds of Power would have probably sent the Wood Elves running by now. The Dark Elf too strong. That's why I kicked them out of both one. <laughs> exactly. Exactly, friend. Um, so, yeah, he's gonna... Man, he just runs right through those Dryads. He's gonna contest the point, but I just don't... I think Malice is gonna be too strong here. Um, and he's just gonna mess these Dryads up. Wait, is this... What did he pop? A bloodstorm. Okay. So he gives himself a lot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, there you go, Malice. Malice the Phallus, as we say, because it's always not very interesting to uh, watch him just obliterate stuff all by his own. But he is quite the Chad, and he kind of has to be respected. So, you know, tragically, we are going to see the last charge of the, the Roperine, the uh, <laughs> Great Stag Melter. Uh, they're, they're doing some good damage to him. Like, this actually, like, fully healthy stag knights would be scary here. They genuinely would be. Um, I think healing for wood elves might be necessary. I do like sh shadow, but I think you need to keep... You can, You only have so many key pieces you can bring because you're so low model count when you're bringing wood elves usually that I feel like you do need to heal them back up when you get a chance because if these guys got like a fat regrowth or something... Uh, what well, will probably want to just seed the point until Malice degens out. Um, yeah. You you could potentially do that. Um, let's see here. Uh, it'd be up to Malice to go hunt down the rest of his army at this point. This is why you do... We do want to eventually have, uh... Uh, Bounce of Power back. Or not Bounce of Power, but... Uh, well, yeah, Bounce of Power. Uh, Bounce of Power back in, uh, the game just for situations like this. Uh, although I'm pretty sure it's not going to take a lot for the Wood Elf Army to rout at this point. Malice just needs to clean up these guys, chase all the infantry away, like literally just kill this guy, kill these two, and then I'm pretty sure the Great Stag Knights will just rout from there. I mean, they're already like borderline routing. So, army losses, that's the word I'm looking for. We have a balance of power, but uh, the, the underlying mechanic of the balance of power yeah, I've been missing terms all day, umbrella. Like, I've just been saying nonsense. Like, I have not streamed in so long. Like, I, I know all like almost all the like names of the units in this game pretty much. And then I'll just like look at something on stream and just be like, yep, I don't know what that is. Yeah, so kill this guy. These guys should route. If they route right now, game's over, essentially. Uh, you know, even with D Gen, he has healing abilities, right? Um, what is this one? It's uh right here. Yeah. Um, so this is this is gonna be wraps, yeah. Wraps right here. Let's see, do we have any thing for the wood elves? Nope, nothing. There we go. Wood elf, wood elf, wood elf. Okay, that was a really good game though. I hope you guys are entertained by that because that was pretty fun for me to cast. Uh, I think it was, like, I genuinely think, I mean, this build composition, like, aside from the fact that Malice got, or not Malice, uh, Orion got sniped out very, like, early from, uh, I think it was some, some just focus fire from the Dark Shards. Uh, I think the Widows were in a good position to win that. It's just, you, you know, Wild Riders, tragically, just, they got in the cookie jar and it just didn't even matter. 
Like, I mean, it just didn't even matter. Like, they, they got caught by, like, infantry and shit and just died. And they traded, like... You're just not that great in the Dark Road. <laughs> like, Stag Knights did their thing. Orion actually was very good in the back line. He should have probably stayed a little more in the back line. Uh, conserve some of that health. And uh, the Glade Guards did... One of them did really well. A few of them got really good shots at the beginning, but... Uh, there's a nasty, nasty, um, uh, ba -ba -ba -da, Flock of Doom that actually caught, like, a Glade Guard, a War Dancer, and a Ryan in it, and it was just, nat like, it just, uh, it just routed them off, uh, in the late game that really screwed over the Wood Elves. And yeah, no healing on either side, and, well, I mean, not like Dark Elves of Healing, they don't need it. Malice being the Phallus, though, is, uh, very good. Very good. And, uh, yeah, I'm surprised these guys got this much value after getting shot to hell. But there you go. Bam, bam. Ooh, nice. One of those guys got really, really good value as well. There you go. GG. All right. On to the next one. Let me get my little <clears throat> locker up. Thomas, the guardian of all that is holy. And army screens as well. Snacking on a cinnamon donut. One of the OG ones. Like Very little sugar like in the donut. Like, it's not glazed just regular like fried and then just like just regular cinnamon and sugar just smacked onto this thing very good stuff i like classic donuts i'm a classic man look at me i'm eating donuts because i'm a classic man that one is on already that one is on already Oh, yeah, for, for bringing Malice, yeah. Yeah, so he had to pick uh, Malice because Rainy Frog picked Malice and he beat him, so he collected him into his arsenal of lords. Now we're seeing a Tyrion Toddbringer matchup. Tyrion, originally manned by Ryder of Rohan, claimed by Lamb Sauce King. And Bouge uh, took the Toddy from uh, Iron Zero. Not Iron Zero? Uh, he took him from... Oh no, that's just him. He's just Toddy. Okay, there you go. Malice needs to be in melee to heal. There's definitely a world where Malice can be forced to degen out. Uh, yeah, yeah. I mean, he, he basically... Like, he could hunt down the rest of those things, though, and I'm pretty sure, like... Yeah, as long as he did that, I'm pretty sure those things were just route from, like, unit conditions, not so much, like, balance of power, cause, or uh, army losses, because it's not there, but, like, because of how many forces and allies it's lost, I'm sure it would route. But if it didn't, then it would be unfortunate, because wild riders are faster than mouse. So, yes, there potentially is a world, but that didn't happen, luckily. And I didn't, I don't think it would happen, but it could. Uh, if they were if they were much healthier, it definitely could have happened for sure. Um, but yeah, their leadership was really low at the end there. I mean, they sh yeah yeah they shattered pretty quickly after getting the combat. Tony oh. is my starter. He's my number one. He's my varsity quarterback, bruh. He's gonna take me all the way, all the way to that championship. Gonna get that belt. Gonna hang it up in the hallway and they're gonna know we were here. <laughs> nah, but um uh, yeah, I mean um, I'm excited people are interested in the mod again. It's very fun. I'm gonna try and start doing content more. I'm gonna uh, I'm starting a new Blood Bowl league so people can watch me rage. Um, which is a late well, I actually I don't even know if I'll rage. Like I'm I've evolved in terms of, like, a Blood Bowl rage because I think there was a day, guys, or a period when I was very sweaty into Blood Bowl, which is not a very healthy thing to be because it is a very RNG game. Even at the highest levels, they'll tell you about all these percentages and crap. In a, in a game, in a singular game, like, there's so many things that can go wrong in, like, a D6 system. And, like, you just... It, it it can just infuriate you if you're on like a high playoff game like and you're just like yep i'm gonna get to the finals or whatever yep and then you just roll double ones or something and your guy slips and dies and he's your star player and like all like most of the values in that guy and then you're just facing this like beast of a team 
and they're just like nothing's happening for you and you're just like nah. <laughs> just screeching at the gods i don't I've never imagined Tom the Tank Engine coming in on the Chaos Dwarf side. Yeah, he he is he he is man. He's a bona fide Chaos Dwarf invention. I think that's why there's so many like evil memes of him running around because he just secretly is like a Chaos Agent, just sowing destruction and despair wherever he goes. Yeah, that's my theory. That is the working theory. Yeah, I'm gonna play. I'm gonna practice some more. Uh, dune spice wars as well uh turn uh, has gone back into that game and um in addition to that like they've just updated the absolute crap out of it like multiple free updates multiple free factions i mean that's like value dude like i bought the game once and like there's been there's like two more factions with like fully fleshed out everything and you're just like nice nice i wish another game company i knew would do this <laughs> but no um but uh it is actually a very fun game uh turns uh metaphor for it actually is pretty or comparison is pretty uh on point of it's like a game of commander and magic which if you're not familiar is like a four player uh magic the gathering game card playing game and because it's like four player there's like a bunch of kind of like politicking and scheming and like fuckery going on just to make sure you can try to get your plan off at least do your like dex thing rather than survive sometimes sometimes you just want to see your like deck like doing what it was made to do rather than win the game but in order to win you definitely have to scheme in some capacity or just have a deck that is so like efficient and god tier that you can just beat out three other players <laughs> like quickly um which can happen because i mean there is like you know power levels to it if someone brings out like a really disgusting deck and you're playing with a bunch of people who just you know didn't throw that much money or thought into it uh, you can end up just wiping the table with people. Okay. Get into it, baby. All right, so... I'm pulling my boss. Lamb Sauce King is bringing another elf faction. See if Tyrion can do the job this time. He has got a Fane Repost, a very good buff for the old Tyrion. A Sunfang, which is the tear or kind of fiery breath ability attached to his weapon. And then Heart of Avalon, of course, giving that juicy heal. We don't... Where's the mage? We have a Mage of Death. Um, we have the Book of Hoeth with a huge fatty uh, power recharge of 160, which is just gross. I mean, even for 36 seconds, it's very gross. And the Starward Staff. Like, High Elves can get a lot of mana. People very forget about the uh, passives of the High Elves, but they're very good at uh, storing some good mana and life leeching for even more. We have two archers with light armor. We have two eagle claw bolt throwers. We have three war lions. Two war lions. Three war lions. No, he keeps moving these fuckers around. No, three war lions. Great. Thank you, sir. All right, so we have one spearman, two spearmen, three spearmen, five spearmen, and no silverins. We have two Illyrians. And that about makes it up. So a lot of a lot of war lions, spears, some archers, Tyrion, some light cab. There you go. For the toddy forces of Booze, we have the full kit yet again with the blood roar, with the, all the buffs and debuffs that he brings, which is very gross, and makes it easy to route off stuff as the good old Todd Toad bringer. And uh, we have one crossman, two huntsmen. Oh, interesting. Okay, yeah, that's very nice. Or two crossman, two huntsmen. Then we have a front line of uh, did, 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 four spears. We have three spears. No, we have five spears. What the fuck? We have three swordsmen, and then we have three empire knights. Count them for me. The last piece to resistance. Well, aside from the other HQ, which is the Celestial Wizard with Harmonic Convergence. And Curse of the Midnight Wind, both a good buff and debuff spell. Uh, you know. Roiling Skies is actually a pretty not useful at all in this situation, but could be good if you were facing an every player, you know, uh, like Black or any of the famed Dragon Lords of our time. The Sunmaker, though, is pretty gross and can deal some good damage, but those Bolt Throwers will make short work of it. It just depends how much damage this sucker can get off before. Is a range of 480. These Bolt Throwers have a range of 380, so he has a hundred meters to rain hell down upon the oh is this going at this is going at yep this is going at Tyrion this is a horrible 
a horrible missed shot. Ugh. Even though they did get a little glancing fire on him, he definitely wanted to save that volley uh, for some of these spearmen or possibly the archers. Because now he's just kind of wasted uh, that kind of instant uh, shooting time that you can get. Playing blue deck in Commander is weird. <laughs> Playing blue deck in Commander is weird. Okay, good. I was just making sure that Thomas was not invading us and I didn't take the screen blocker off. Okay, some spearmen getting absolutely toasted down here. Poor boys. They are running for their lives. See, I think I have almost everything on maximum uh, settings, but I'll have to double check. Because sometimes I feel like I am not looking as glorious as other, the other footage that I'm seeing for uh, Warhammer 3. But I have the PC to definitely do it. And uh, you can't hear it, but it is... It is my PC is panting. Uh, I mean, it does that all the time, pretty much, but it, uh, <laughs> because of the weird precarious position I have to put it in, but, uh, it is a beast of a, of a PC. Uh, even for now, with all the 400 series and all that shit out. Um, Boris patrolling around. Uh, Sunmaker actually getting some decent value. Let's see what we got. Uh, Wuhan, uh, not really. The bolt throwers, three bolt throwers, maybe. Uh, coming in hot, and they're about to just rain absolute destruction upon the Sunmaker. Um, the archers are getting pretty toastied, though. Toastied with the mostied. Uh, Tyrion and some Illyrian Reavers are charging right through the lines to get to some of these Equal Bolt Throwers. The uh, good old War Lions are coming in to beat up these Illyrians. Which, uh, yeah, wait, wait. Oh, no, these are hard. Uh, what am I talking about? Uh, Empire Knights. I was looking for the Master as I really looked. Um, so the Empire Knights are getting a little cooked by these War Lines of Trace, but they're also trading very well into both uh, targets here. And you might need to pull a little more support if you have it, but it doesn't look like the High Elves do because those War Lines are caught up in the Empire Knights over here. These Illyrian Reavers are not going to be enough by themselves to take out these Empire Knights. You definitely need to combo spears and stuff in here, but that is also assuming that these Empire Knights stay in combat, which they don't have to, at least not against the Spearmen. They can run through their own Spearmen, force the White Lines of Trace to get surrounded. Uh, Empire Knights wavering, but they have cleared out one Eagle Ball Bolter, and the other one is kind of stuck in Purgatory, trying to get back onto their uh, artillery pieces here. Backline of the Empire is pretty much safe. They have actually managed to protect it from both of these uh, intruding high elf units. Uh, the Warlines of Trace need to definitely go and grab that. Well, there are two ammunition. Maybe just stay and fight and try to beat up these Empire Knights, but they're getting shot over Overwatch fire by these crossbows or hunters over here. And it is not looking good for the high elves whatsoever. Um, Spearmen holding off. It's just, uh, I'm seeing a lot of cost efficient trades for the Empire here. Um, they're up 500 on value, but the position feels a lot stronger to me. Uh, Tyrion, although a beast, um, cannot carry the game on his back necessarily, especially not against the Toady. Unless Tyrion, does Tyrion have a minus? I thought no, he does not. So he can definitely get a leadership bomb at the end there. You do not want to see this, though, with Celestial Wizard getting caught out by Tyrion. Getting robbed of your magic in the mid-game would be horrendous. And it would not be great. The Toadie might need to come back and try to support Tyrion, or at least try to waddle your Celestial Wizard back into some infantry here to try to negate the absolute butt pounding that Tyrion is going to lay down upon me. Um, a lot of the units for the Hives are coming back, even though they are once broken off. They do need to go back to their artillery uh, positions. But uh, allowing this uh, rocket, uh, that rocket could have, that last one could have gone uh, probably to these archers here. But, uh, yeah, the high elves have been pretty fairly compromised. Um, the damage value is almost a thousand in difference now. And these archers are getting compromised as well. There's just not a lot of pockets of, of victory and not a lot of avenues of victory I'm seeing for the high elves. Um, we are just seeing absolute destruction from Toddy and crew. However, there's a little pocket of resistance. We do have uh, some spearmen holding down Eagle Bolthers and Eagle Claw Bolthers. There's a lot of L's. <laughs> He's like, I don't know why that, that's hard for my little, my li wee little tongue. But uh, spearmen are going to get probably beaten up by these just much healthier uh, regular spearmen of the Empire. Uh, 
Warlines, if Trey's going to trade poorly both into Empire Knights and into these Spearmen, uh, Toddy doesn't want like a full duel with Tyrion, but he can definitely lay some hurt down on him and is going to need to at some point, optimally when he's surrounded by Spears or uh, other infantry. And you kind of want to probably position yourself somewhere around the cap point. Uh, you know, it is 140, which isn't necessarily uh, high. Uh, you know, so the cap point's been thrown around, contested a little bit here. Um, so yeah, you're you're not necessarily seeing uh, any time soon the cap point coming into play. I think the Empire pretty much has it in the bag here. Uh, but there is some late game shenanigans, like if Tyrion snipes out Horus, kills him outright, could be very devastating. And then maybe if you get your bolt throwers back online, eliminate all the backline threats, and try to just shoot down the Empire infantry. But it's a lot of health, a lot of infantry. So I really don't know. Even with oh, that's not a very good subject. You could have gotten all this time away. Oh, I guess we kind of want the markers on now, huh? Yeah, yeah so that wasn't the greatest thing. You could have gotten the same thing later. And the Deathcaster going down. Just not good. Just not good. The high Elves are surging ahead in value, though, perhaps because Toddy is getting whooped up by uh, Tyrion. Again, this this pocket of uh, backline stuff could potentially help, but I just don't even see these war lines uh, killing the spearmen. At least not in a cost-effective way to really have any sort of protection back here. And I believe these guys uh, and their little yeah, they're all right here. That's where all the artillery is. So they need to waddle quite a distance where the uh, Empire spearmen and infantry can definitely get to them very easily. We do have a healthy Spearman, and we do have Tyrion being surrounded, but you probably want to cycle charge if you're a Horus. And Tyrion's just too much of a god, even when he's getting demoralized, debuffed by the Toddy. Tyrion is a Chad of Chads, a Elf's Elf, uh, a really just kind of the John Wick of Elves, you know? He just doesn't, you know, he send them. I'll kill them all. Like, that's pretty much what he's saying right now. And it's true. He will. So, you know, it's just, it's just not looking great. But uh, the archer's running away from these swordsmen, getting chased down by war lions. Did those... Uh, those spearmen got right off. Very nice. So the war lions actually traded a little better than I thought. They still took some decent damage from uh, going to the spearmen. But they actually ate them up quite nicely. Now, if these guys can do the same here, they do have armor piercing anti infantry, so it's going to quite be the buff. Fortunately, gets terrorized by the Toddster and ruins all their fun. Their dream of a back line, the High Elves will have to relinquish once again because the Toddy is here. Uh, the cap has switched to Empire again, and I just don't see position wise how the High Elves recover. It's just the Sunmaker got allowed to unload its full volleys. Let's see what he got here. 1,200. I don't, even, I don't think that paid for itself, if I recall. But, uh, still pretty good. Allowing all your ammunition to get expended is a good feeling, especially when you're Empire and you have very strong artillery options. But, uh, yeah, Toddy doesn't have to stick around too much around here. He can go try to get rid of this uh, Eagle Claw Bolt or with relative impunity. I mean, Tyrion can come after him, but he does have a self-heal as well. So unless Tyrion can keep him on the ground, uh, there's not a lot stopping him from simply flying up again. I mean, technically Tyrion's faster, so he shouldn't be able to get away. But we all know how uh, engage, like engaging and disengaging uh, from chasing. Oh, he, he gets him in the back. This could be a little dangerous here. Can Toddy escape? Is this a throw? Is this a throw? Are we seeing a throw in game two? Toddy getting chopped down again. Chop, chop, chop that ass down. Oh my god. Is Toddy gonna die here? Tyrion, you monster. Uh-oh. Yep, there's a broken Toddster and he's gonna die soon. And there goes poor Toddy on his griffin of the gods. What a sad little fellow. Damn. 
What a tragic end to such a Chad of the game. Now we're in a late game, which is looking very uncertain. A lot of the Empire troops wavering now that their leader has tragically lost their life to John Wick Elf. This is going to be a tight situation for both factions. High Elves kind of lacking the manpower to really out, like, cap or out push the Empire, but the Empire may be lacking the leadership and power to take out Tyrion. So we're going to have to see how this all ends, but unfortunately, uh, the archers are going to rain hell down upon these horsemen. It is from the front, so they're going to shield bones. Uh, with Tyrion and the Deathcaster still alive, this could be a problem. The Deathcaster dying would suck. It's tragic we don't have Winds of Magic. I do think about, like, having a if we have a powwow with the UI guy, um, we made that UI mod and maybe we can get it implemented just automatically into the cap point mod, would be super awesome. Oh wow, High Elves getting the victory. High Elf versus um, in the Valley. That's insane, what a turn of events. What a turn of events. That is wild. I was sure Bouge had that, I think just tragically i mean he wasn't able to finish off all the jobs you know i mean and those war lions actually secured that pocket in the back line and made it so those eagle claw bolt throwers could pressure the todd todd really didn't get that much value i mean he did his job like scaring shit but he really didn't get a lot of value here empire knights although traded up pretty well they really just ran in beat up both the illyrians and the um white line here's that one white line that just went ham yeah good for him Good for him. Uh, oh my god, Tyrion chunked through so much of Boris's HP, that is insane. And I'm sure the the um, the Sunfang, his AoE, got some good shots as well. Yeah, I mean, Eagle Claw Bolters tried their best, but they, I guess they weren't even firing on the Sunfanger. They just got, no, they got compromised super early. What am I talking about? Um, yeah, that was an excellent game, boys. That was a good one. That was a good one. Alright, let's put up our... Thomas, and I'm gonna go blow my nose yet again, so you will hear me be cleared nosed for a second, and then uh, we'll go back to my nasally ways. Don't you worry. All right, I'm back. Let's see here, boys. We are going with uh, Lokir for um, Lamb Sauce King as first choice of the night. And Warzag, who was uh, picked by Iron Zero, who is now being rocked by the Bouge. Warzag being one of the better lords in the game and on Greenskins, which is a hard... Uh, choice uh a kind of hard matchup for dark elves i don't think it's the worst for dark elves i think they have a lot of options to use from as well but i do think overall arcing trying to beat the general strategy of greenskin rush uh is hard for the good old de unless they're very careful about it so we'll see what both players have in store for us as i gobble down and second half of my donut and I'm not being uh, creepy, it's actually a donut. <laughs> Oh, 
Mabouge pointing out. Unless the uh, green skin player is really bad at the faction. Fair enough. Yep. You know, until like a larger player base comes back, I do wonder, uh, you know, about some of the, like, Greenskins are a really gross faction. Or not gross, but they're very good. Um, but it's just like they, aside from like buffing some key units, they've been very much the same, right? Like, they've, been, they've not changed a lot. So I do wonder in the hands of some of the like players of old, if greenskins would be as much as a menace as they as they are because like uh, i can sit here and talk about terror all i want but unless i'm a good player enough to sh showcase like good dragon or good whatever play you know i just have to bite my tongue but if we have someone who can actually play with dragons well cough black and very few others in the scene at the moment um you know there's, there's no ground to stand on, but I still very much think terror is, like, one of the ways to go against green skins. Uh, you just have to be very particular with your timing, and particular with how you engage their cav as well. I think that's the key. It's just brutal because however you engage, you have to engage well on all fronts, which is a ridiculously hard thing to do when someone's just running at you, right? Who does black ban your greasians? Tragic. Tragic, you know? We'll see what Lance King can do. We'll see what he can do. We will see what he can do. And he has, he has to play low Q. I'm not imagining he takes a dragon, even though I probably would. Um, but I guess you can't soul stealer it. But he does have... He, he has passive healing, though. And I think it's as long as he's engaged in melee, if I recall here. Of the Kraken. In melee. So, I mean, like... Yeah, and you get... Man, he is actually good, like... That's the thing. It's like, even for, like, dragons. Like, this guy has, like, very good uh, melee stats. Look here might pull, uh... Might, might do some crazy stuff. Although, yeah. Let's just assume he takes a dragon. Yeah, because, like, foot, foot low is just going to be irrelevant, I think, too much, unfortunately. Uh, you know, not to give any hints if he is uh, watching the stream, but, uh, yeah, I would definitely take a drag. <laughs> definitely take some source of, like, terror, fear, leadership debuffing, because that's one of the few things that can, like, get rid of that little front line that is so effective, which is the goblins and the squigs. Uh, if you can get that pressure off you so you can just focus on their cav, that's where I think you have the ticket. But if you don't have solutions to, like, deal with either in a timely manner, you're very much in hot water. Because by the time they engage in melee, if you haven't, like, done stuff to them already, they're just going to trade so well. Even if the goblins and squigs end up losing, they're going to do so much damage to whatever they're fighting. Um, I mean, there is, like, something we said for, like, bringing a, like, a good amount of, like, anti-large cav and then charging up the middle, but then when, what ends up happening is, like, the greenskin player responds in kind by charging with, uh, boar boys, but, like, there is certain cav in this game that I feel like fights better in like a blob scenario. And when boar boys like, if they're just themselves huddled around something, they can get some good damage in. I will say though, boar boys, like if they're sh like saturated with the goblins and stuff, ever since like game two even, like I feel like they are one of those units with one of those hit boxes that just doesn't like surround very well. And I think you can exploit that a little bit here if you're if, if you're cognizant of that, I guess. So you could potentially, like, get more benefit from charging up the middle uh, than, like, they could have countercharging. Now, they do have more mass in game three, but I still think that uh, that they, they kind of get, like, muddied by their own troops a lot. All right, let's take off Thomas. Let's take the Tom off for finale, our epic grand finale. It'll be a fight of the ages. So we are seeing Loke here. Spoiler. Um, he's on foot. 
Uh, he is very much not on a dragon, which I don't think is the best choice. But can he make it work? Let's find out. He did bring some wild shit, including a Hydra. Gotta love me a Hydra, man. Gotta love it. All right, so let's go over the Dark Elves since we're talking so much theory here. Um, let's take a look here. We got Dreaded Duelist. We got, oh, Merciless Slaver as well. Again, would have been better on the dragon. Would have been better on the dragon. Minus six leadership is what I'm talking about here. If we brought, like, uh, you know, death magic, we could have done some leadership bombs here. Anyways, didn't stop harping. Helm the Kraken. Uh, so he's going to be very tanky in, in the dual uh, fight, but he's probably not going to get that with the old Zag because he'll just dance around him on his wily pig or just on foot. Uh, we have the War Hydra. Oops. Uh, with the another takes it place and a fiery breath, uh, you know, the good old classics from the Hydra there. Uh, where is the lore of fire cast under there? Uh, burning head and cascading fire cloak. Don't mind the burning head. Uh, they actually will just run roughshod on the goblins if it goes in a straight line. If it goes in a straight line and you manage to get a good shot on them, could be brutal and devastating to a green skin front line, but. That is if your burning head actually does what you tell it to do, which it doesn't a lot of the time now. Uh, four bleak swords in the front, uh, totally going to lose to that combo of goblins and swig herd for sure. Uh, but the blind guard wouldn't, uh, but they might need to, you know, reinforce the line quicker than you would think. And Sisters of Singing Doom uh, would be pretty good here. I mean, they're still taking a lot of damage to the squigs, but uh, they have good enough stats that they'll chew through the goblins pretty quickly. Cold One Knights, Cold One Knights, so these guys are good. Can trade decently well into Boar Boys, but they are more expensive, so it's not like getting the best deal ever. On top of it, we have some Skirmish Cav, which I can't really advise too much, especially in this matchup, just because of, uh, well, stuff like this. Forest Goblin Spider Riders to zone you out the entire time. They cost 400. Uh, if they're preventing you from shooting, even if they're not engaging the entire time, it's pretty much worth it. And they have four of them, so you can't really escape their presence on the map. Okay, let's look at the HQ of the Warzag here. We have Effigy the Git, Brain Bursta, Fist of Gork, and here we go. These are all very decent spells. Uh, sometimes I like taking Headbutt, but this very much works as well. Three spells is definitely enough. We have the combo here, Bonewood Staff and Squiggly Beast, which is very good. Makes the engine, the Warzag engine run. We have uh, two, three trolls, two trolls, two trolls. We have a stone troll and the swamp things. We have the broken test mob for that good old ROR boar boy action with the encourage. And then two orc boar biggins. And then just a line of gobos and squigs. And then the aforementioned uh, boar's goblin fighters. Yeah. Very good stuff. Very rushy. Oh, and a mogrim's mangy marauder up in here. Probably going to take some good pot shots. At some uh, Cold One Knights, optimally, uh, War Hydra, or Blackguard. So you have a good amount of fair good targets for those uh, Mage Marauders. And no Dragon is a real wild picker. Yeah, yeah, it definitely is. Um, you like the Dragon for a lot of reasons, right? So, like, you know, I was theorizing about leadership stuff, which can work if you're good at timing and you're good at uh, trying to just pick out those engagements where they, little, they overextend a bit. And also because of the breaths, um, you know, if you brought like a death cast or two, you can like breath down either breathing, like a getting a good breath on the boar boys is super crucial. And late game, if you have like one breath left, you can breath the crap out of Warzag or even mid game, breath the crap out of Warzag in tandem with some spirit leeching action. You can uh, get them down and maybe even just do a little charge ski, charge and dip a -roo, try to start routing them off. Could be good stuff. Keep his, uh, Keep his wah from flowing too hard. Keep him from wahing. Let's see if this uh, war hydra can do anything funky with the flame breath. No? No funky flame breath? No funky funky fresh flame breath. Wicka wicka slip shady? No? Okay. Um, these dark riders again are just getting holed up. Like, I don't know what they're going to shoot. Uh, this, this I think was a very much, yeah, not it play. Uh, the war hydra I think is alright. 
but it just is a lot of okay okay engaging okay if if he engages peacemill like this if the bouge does not uh, engage properly with the green skins now that could be a weak point that the dark house could hone in on here um dark riders firing back into the mograbs that'll do some decent damage but eventually there's gonna get caught out probably our spy riders will charge in squigs charging in with the gobbles in the front uh, Squig's doing their little whoopsie dance as they're getting their funneled call information. I hate when the game does this. These guys also get in call information, but they are getting a pincer attack. So this is actually hideous for the uh, Clover Knights, even though it's a bad formation charge for the Orc Boys. This is going to be so much better. One, because they're getting, oh, Fist of Bork, plus the Force Goblins, plus the Bowman Staff. I mean, look at these guys' melee stats. Just behold, you know? Like, it's just disgusting. Um, and this is why they're spooky. This is why you need leadership because it's not so much like, yeah, you will beat them in melee. Like it's really hard to do that. <laughs> really hard to do that. Uh, so if you can get some terror in there, uh, get some. Oh god, these guys. The warhide just getting singled out. Uh, Loki are doing absolutely nothing. But swamp things. Just hasn't even landed a hit. I don't know if he's getting knocked around. Or okay, yeah, there we go. Warhide are already procking its fucking two horrible to die whenever it takes the place takes its place um you know a lot of dark riders alive but a lot of the front line of the dark elves are getting crumped and quite literally because they are and so the black guard are going to survive and they will trade up even into the four boys but uh late game this is about all they're going to have and i would actually start getting oh whoa, 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 is this actually happening is he going to get a little charge nope no nope. even if he got just right up in his grill he could just pin it in and be over anyways um Four boys charging around, trying to catch these guys. Looks like the spider riders actually do catch these guys. And this is the problem, is that, like, even if you were kiting perfectly with these dark riders, perfectly, you're still just getting chased around by two of these guys. Two four spider riders, that's it. That's all it takes, you know? And they're, they're just pretty much useless for the rest of the match. Uh, unless you're very good at micro and you had some dark riders on your own. If you want to go heavy skirmish and try to go that route, you need more mobility to support yourself. Especially against a light, uh, kind of wide rush faction like uh, Greenspins are. Oh, Swamp Things are getting, so, like, singled out here. And since they're alone, the Stone Trolls don't need to be fighting Loki. here. It's not really their optimal target anyways. They should charge in right up into the Sisters and Bleak Swords. And you, we're actually going to be popping some brain bursters up in this hoe, right in that blob. Or at least on the black art, or, you know, somewhere useful. Because the Swamp Things just got routed off. Uh, the damage value is insanely different, though. Um, you know, the terror from the War Hydra could do something, but the leadership of all these orc units are just so high because of how much damage has been done and how much stuff they've killed, that they're really just not going to care unless you, like, really somehow leadership on the board. I just don't, you don't have the tools for it, so unfortunately, anymore. You can throw down a burning head and attempt to burn a head a little bit burning head on these guys, actually. Uh, well, this is, this is nice to do that, but uh, these guys aren't crucial. This Hydra is definitely crucial. And he gets another heal off. Beautiful. So now I can come over here and maybe tear out these guys, save his, uh, his sorceress of fire here, because that is pretty crucial. Uh, wow, uh, Loki is getting bullied to absolute hell. Wow, oh my god, Warzag just comes in hot and heavy, beating the crap out of Loki with his own two hands. Damn, stomped him out with a pig too, curb stomped him on the road. Oh my god, Warzag, you dirty dog. Well, that is pretty much over Bover, I would say. You can sit here with your black art and your Hydra all you want. Well, will I say that? Uh, you know, I think, no, 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 the Ma mages are alive, Warzag probably has plenty of mana, he's gonna be able to blast these guys, uh, the Mo Mograbs should be able to shoot them down, and the amount of cycle charging potential he has here is absolutely insane, he can even have this, the trolls sit back and, uh, regen health while the rest of it cycle charge so they can, uh, fight when they're healthy and free, and, uh, Warzag is being chilly. So yeah, it's, it's definitely a rough matchup. Uh, you know, uh, Lamp Sauce probably hasn't considered too many builds about this, I would say. And, uh, yeah, this is rough. I mean, it's just, a, just not a fun match. This is a good flaming head, though. Oh, whoa, 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 where did the flaming head go? That would have been a good one. Because you, then you could actually leadership on these guys. I mean, not the swamp things, but these guys. 
And, uh, okay, okay, Boar Boy's terrorizing. Very good. That's the thing, is, like, I genuinely think you have to try to beat Greenskins in the mobility game, because if you don't, these these little fucks right here just really rough shot. Them. Just your entire army. I mean, the trolls are gross too, but like trolls can be dealt with in various ways. Little boys just need to get obliterated. They're a kill on sight unit, you know. Uh, which I was, I was thinking of making a series like that, like like what kill on sight unit, you know, you have like highest priority for each faction. Like when you see them in a build, you're like, ah, that needs to go. <laughs> or if that thing is allowed to thrive, it's over, you know. And GG. Uh, GS. Oh. Yep, 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 yep. GG, GG, GG's. Uh, that was a brutal. A lot of goblin kills, though. Look at that. Um, it was just a brutal matchup, plus the build. I don't think these guys are worth it. I just. We're in an era where Missile Cav is not that good, anyways. Uh, on top of that, I, there's just not that many good targets for, you know, like in prolonged, if you have the mobility advantage and you're certain of that, these guys could, you know, deal some good damage to the, uh, the board boy biggins, but you have to have enough time to sit there and shoot them in the backs, probably, you know, um, and this build is just not going to provide you with that, uh, Hydra tragically. But I mean, you know, this is a fun build. I love the Hydra. I don't even know if he got his flame off, tragically. I was, I was thinking he's going to get shoot some flame into squigs, maybe make a rampage or something. But uh, yeah. Lad, lad, lad. Yep, Booge takes the title. Booge, the king of the current legendary lord. You might have to have a little Hall of Fame uh, umbrella in that section of the Discord um, where uh, we have the cat point tournaments. Um, and there you go. So GG to all our competitors. Thank you guys for participating in this tournament. It was a lot of fun to host slash cast. Umbrella's the true host and organizer. So I didn't have to do all that crap, but one day I'll probably have to start doing that and I'll be a sad boy as I look at all my brackets and just do that. But yeah. Um, but yeah, guys. Uh, we'll tune in for the next one. I'm sure we'll do it uh, next week as well. I'm going to be probably doing some more content. I know I've said that a thousand times. Like, literally, you could go back in, like, at least five different videos where I'm like, and this week, I'm going to do more content. But this time, definitely serious. Uh, I want to get this, get the mod up, uh, get the community up, and just overall good vibes with everybody, and try to, uh, try to elevate. Try to elevate the community to a place where everybody wants to play and is happy and is not yelling at each other for different, you know, versions of the game uh but yeah uh hope you guys have a good one i'm probably gonna peace out i might stream the rest of these uh battles or maybe turn them into replays i might turn them into little replays <laughs> and uh we'll show you the rest of the rounds uh perhaps another day and um yeah we'll uh we'll go ahead and leave it off there i know we just jumped up in viewers but uh thank you guys for popping up and uh yeah I hope to see you in the next one. Goji out. I guess we'll play the orc song to actually play this out as well. So those of you who missed the intro can get the full intro experience. All right, let's do it. <laughs>